car, madam? Yeah. There we have it, Mr. Speaker. No buts, just cuts. <laughs> Can I join the Prime Minister in sending our condolences to the families of those soldiers who gave their lives in Iraq and in, in Afghanistan over the last few months? We must make sure that they do not die in vain. The Home Office has explained that it is moving prisoners at risk of escaping to open prisons. The Home Secretary is apparently happy with this. Is the Prime Minister? As the Home Secretary just pointed out, the sconding is actually the, the lowest for 10 years. And therefore, the idea, the idea that we have a situation of which we're going to put the public at risk is absolutely absurd. Uh, there will be no people who are put in open prisons that are a risk to the public. And as the Home Secretary has just pointed out, the figures on absconding are actually the lowest for 10 years. And let me point something else out to him, that when he was actually advising the Home Secretary at the Home Office under the last administration, we had many, many Category A prisoners as well as other Category prisoners escape. And I'm pleased to say I think under this administration there have been no Category A escapes. <laughs> But the public are at risk and the Home Secretary knows it. I've got here a memo from the Governor of Ford Open Prison that could not be clearer. It says this will mean almost inevitably that the abscond rate, that's people escaping, will go up in Cat D prisons. Medium term burglars and robbers are likely to abscond. Whatever happened to tough on crime? Now let's look at something else. Ah. Hold on a minute. I know you've only got a few more goes. <laughs> let's, let's look at something else. Let's look at something else the Prime Minister said. He said that any foreign national convicted of an imprisonable offence should be deported automatically. The Home Secretary is now bribing prisoners with up to £2,500 to get them to go home. Whatever happened to automatic deportation? What the Home Secretary is doing very sensibly is making sure that we can ensure that all those foreign secretary, uh, foreign... <laughs> okay. Right. But there's not much of a recovery after that one, but... Um, that all those foreign prisoners can be returned as early as possible. And it is obviously going to cost money in order to do that, but in order to make sure that it happens more quickly, then we're making sure not that they're given a cash payment. This is absolutely wrong. What happens is that we're able to, to make sure that we pay for their return before their sentence is completed so that we reduce the pressure on British prisons and when their sentence is completed so that they're returned immediately. That is the only way we will get the foreign prisoners back quickly. Well, let's actually look at what happened. Of the 1,000 prisoners, those are the ones that were released who should have been deported, only 86 have actually been sent home. That is not automatic deportation. Now, let's look at another thing the government said. The health secretary told us this was the best ever year for the NHS. Will the prime minister confirm that since then, 20,000 jobs are being cut, 80 community hospitals are under threat and 60 major hospitals face cutbacks. Would he describe it as the best ever year for the NHS? Well, first of all, I'm delighted we've got on to the National Health Service. Um, there are not 20,000 jobs going in the National Health Service. Actually, since this government's come to power, there are a quarter of a million extra people employed in the National Health Service. But let me just point out to him, since he's launching this campaign on Saturday about cuts in the National Health Service, his policy proposal earlier this week is for an independent commissioning board that would apparently be free to commission all services. No, nobody, nobody on this front bench is in favour of an independent commissioning board. Okay. They will be free to commission all services, and we know from the Honourable Member for Dorset North that there will be no limits to independent commissioning. That is right. Now, therefore, under his proposal, if they wish to commission maternity services or paediatric services or diagnostics from the private sector, they will be able to do so without limit. So how does he put forward that policy proposal on the Monday and then launch a campaign asking me to intervene with local decisions, provide more money at the end of the week? I don't know why the Prime Minister is attacking our health policy. One of his health ministers has said it's worth looking at. And the Chancellor's going around briefing everyone that he'd introduce it. I know, I know the Prime Minister and the Chancellor don't talk anymore, but if he read the newspapers, he might find out what his Chancellor thinks. Yeah. Yeah. 
The Prime Minister is living in a fantasy world. In the real world, community hospitals are closes, closing, nurses are facing the sack, and beds are being lost. No wonder Labour isn't trusted anymore with the NHS. Now, let's look at something else the Prime Minister told us. He told us in January, you'll enjoy this one, I'm absolutely happy, I'm absolutely happy that Gordon Brown will be my successor. This is what he said, he needs the confidence of knowing he will succeed me, and that's fair enough. Does the Prime Minister still think that today? Well, Mr Speaker, uh, let me just say to him, no, let me say to him, I think, I don't resolve from anything I've said, but let, let me just go back for a moment. No, 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 let us go back for a moment to the National Health Service, right? He's... He has just proposed, he has just proposed a campaign saying that he would reverse all those decisions that are being taken by local decision makers on the NHS and he is saying that he would reverse those decisions. Right, let me read to him from his campaign document. Uh, uh, Prime Minister has gone on too much about the campaign document of the Conservative Party. Order. 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 I, I give the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition some elbow room, and I've uh, given that elbow room, and uh, I ask both the, the Prime Minister and the Leader of the Opposition to take my advice, or, or it will be my instruction soon, sooner or later. Uh, Prime Minister. I'm delighted to say why. I'm delighted. Order. I know how to chair the proceeding. <laughs> no, Let the Prime Minister speak. No, I'm simply explaining why I will not accept the policy on the NHS proposed by the Conservative Party. Well, he is, I assume he launches this policy proposal because he wants us to accept it. And the reason I won't accept it is this, because his proposal is for an independent board to take all commissioning decisions and the allocation of resources. That would mean no accountability for politicians in this House about the decisions that are taken. And it would mean, since there are no limits to the private sector involvement, that any of these services he's going to protest about at the end of the week would be guaranteed under his proposals made at the beginning of the week. Look, it was a pretty straight sort of question, and he's told us he's a pretty straight sort of guy. Does he back the Chancellor as his successor? Yes or no? I mean, I do. Do you? <laughs> I'm sure he's a lot happier talking about that than he is about policy, but I'm going to talk about policy. Yes, I am. I'm sorry, I am going to talk about the policy on the National Health Service, our policy and his policy, because in the end, the issue for the country is who has got the right policies for the future, and it is this party that has made record investment in the National Health Service that he voted against. It's this party that has delivered better waiting times, lower waiting lists, improved cardiac and cancer care, better accident and emergency departments, and his policies would put all of that at risk. And that's why we will stick with our policies, not his. Everyone can see that this government is divided and paralysed. We've got a Prime Minister who doesn't trust his Chancellor, a Chancellor who's been accused of blackmail, the latest Home Secretary wants the Prime Minister's job, the Deputy Prime Minister hasn't got a job but he's still being paid, and all the while hospital wards are closing and the prison system is in chaos. How many more months of this paralysis have we got to put up with? That's precise. There is no paralysis when we, are record, when we have record investment in the health service, which is delivering the results we say. And the reason why it's important that we resist his campaign against the cuts is this. That the changes that we are making in the National Health Service are necessary to make the health service fit for the modern age, when it is changing rapidly, when new technologies and treatments are coming on, when 70% of cases are now daycare cases. He can make all the remarks he wants, but actually it is this government on welfare, on pensions, on energy, on the National Health Service, on education, that is driving forward whilst his party has a series of policies that face both ways, have no credibility whatever. And if he wants to be taken seriously as a leader, get serious on substance.